Namo Narayan. Welcome to this special session, Becoming Elder, Not Just Older. A question that we all entertain at some time or the other. And uh, Swamiji is going to address some of these issues. As uh, Tanish said yesterday, Swamiji doesn't need any introduction. We are all blessed to be around him. On behalf of all the participants, I want to thank you, Swamiji, and we are ready to receive your words of wisdom on this important topic. Okay, Shallow. So please sit in a comfortable position, hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders back in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Shift your awareness to your breath. Natural, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. Shift your awareness once again. Bring it to the eyebrow center, Bru Madhya. And at this place, visualize a brightly burning Deepak, a Jyoti, a flame. And maintaining your awareness on the quality of this flame, the radiance. We shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Oh Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vinavadita Mastu Ma Ved Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari hi Om. Hari Om Tatsat. Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om Tatsat. So a very warm welcome to all the participants for this wonderful webinar on being an elder. Can I request Himaji to uh, repeat the question? And just for the sake of knowledge, do you know that Hema means the golden one? So... We are very lucky to have Hemaji with us and she is uh, brought out some very nice questions, but I will uh, like her to repeat that once again, if you don't mind. Sure, Swamiji. Um, no one can stop the process of aging. The question is, Swamiji, how do we do it gracefully with dignity and ease, physically and mentally? Um, there is a statement that Growing old is mandatory, but getting matured or growing matured is optional. So the word maturity, does it refer to the development of the subtle body? If so, how does one handle the gross body 
with all the pains and aches that uh, come with old age, a um, lot of health issues sometimes as one gets older, um, and the subtle body controlling the mind and still maintain the balance. And um, we, as we grow older, we are taking more and more painkillers and uh, how can we exist without much of a pain, without body aches and pains? And um, we, we go to the internet and we get uh, many, many tips. Um, how do we follow that? Do we uh, apply that to our lives? And if we decide which ones to follow and how long should we follow all these things? I think this is a very important question which you have uh, asked. And I, I think the answer to the question is in the question itself. You mentioned aging is mandatory. Growing old is mandatory, but becoming mature is optional, which means that you need to invest into that. And in the principle of finances, if I want to invest into something, then I need to invest it over a period of time. I cannot invest it right away and reap the benefits right away. Turaddan Mahapunya doesn't always work. So therefore, ideally, we need to start investing into this much earlier. Because you see what happens is as we grow older, generally, if we are not careful, our ability to be flexible, to be open to change starts reducing. Somehow we feel that as I grow in years, I am automatically getting more and more wisdom. Not always the case. We get the wisdom if we are aware, we are observant, and we are curious. Oh, this has happened. Why has that happened? What is the reason behind it? Like a child. So if we are doing that, if we are observing what is happening, how it is happening, then that is the first step. And then second, what you mentioned is about maturity. What does maturity mean? The ability to understand the situation in a larger context, the larger picture, so as they say, and along with that, knowing what is the correct response. We might be technically right, but that might not be the response which will elicit the reaction which we want. There's a nice example. Long time ago in Mahabharata, there were three brothers, two brothers and one half brother to be precise, Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidur. They were born to Shantanu and then they were brought up, they were educated and after doing that, then the time came when they were to be given their duties. Vidur was allocated the vis uh, duty of being the counselor. And Dhritarashtra being the elder one was being thought of as being the king because the king had already passed away and Bhishma was the caretaker. At that point of time, Vidur came up and said that according to these Shastras, according to this, according to all these factors, a person who is physically maimed should not be considered appropriate for the role of a king. And uh, Bhishma accepted and, uh, and later on Bhishma said, Vidur, 
what you have said is technically correct but doing so you have created a ripple in the mind of dhritarashtra god only knows how that is going to pan out instead if you had allowed him to be the king and named pandu as the representative to the king then dhritarashtra would have been the king in name's sake pandu would have been the de facto king and both would have been in harmony even if technically you were right this would have perhaps been a better option and all of us know how the whole thing panned out so this is maturity to know what is a smaller wrong doing a smaller wrong so there is a larger good and this can come when we become learned the experiences in life teach us but have we learned or are we walking with our blinkers and we have failed to imbibe so as we progress in life we need to understand what is the goal yesterday we spoke about what is the goal the goal is evolution of the body and also of the consciousness so with that as our ultimate goal and the first step being improving the quality of our mind tapping the latent powers if we look at every incident in life with that and if we look at every incident in life has come to teach us something even if it is not as per my desires then we start learning and we know how to observe so that i think is the first step the second step is that our body does age and with aging the abilities of the body change the abilities of the body while we are young it comes up then reaches a plateau and then slowly starts coming down however we know so many people now they are in minority now they are even a rarity but there are people who are i have seen people who have been touching three figures but they are totally active some of them are even active in the mind and they are i spent saw one or two of them who were able to observe because they had that long experience they were able to observe okay this is happening that is happening no now better be careful don't do this don't do that this might be so they were able to pinpoint what could happen and for that is very important but how did they manage to remain active that comes because we are taking proper care of our body our body is like a machine and when we have a machine how many times in a year imagine do you drive a car or were you were you driving a car earlier yeah i still do swami ji you still do great yes <laughs> so uh, how many times in a year do you service the car twice twice a year huh and every day, six months huh yes and uh, and how many times do you do the regular routine checks everything happens in that two checkups swami ji they maintain everything they change the oil they do everything but during the uh, other six months you don't take care of the car at all um if you... unless something pops up it uh, yeah <laughs> do you if feel you take it for uh, every 6 months then it runs pretty smoothly but do you check that the engine oil is working do you check yes. that the petrol is 
or do you just forget it for six months? No, no, no. <laughs> Those small things you do every day, right? Yes. So in the same manner, our body is like a machine, like a car, and we need to take appropriate care of that car. Unfortunately, we don't. Do we even spend a day, a week, for the body? We generally don't because we don't even know how to take care of the body. What are the rhythms of the body? What are the systems which need to be followed? Using this example, you have the wheels of the car. Now, if one wheel goes out of alignment and you are driving the car, what will happen? There will be increased wear and tear. The pushing, the bearing, everything will start going bad and sooner or later the car will start making rattling noises etc in the same manner we don't take care of our body the body has an innate system innate rhythm in which it needs to function and most of the times we don't take care of that this results in increased wear and tear and when there is increased wear and tear then the body ages faster. If you don't have proper physical nutrition, you will see the body ages faster. In the clinic at the ashram, patients used to come and they used to look like 70, 80 years old people. And when I used to ask them, their ages were 40, 45, 50. Of course, some of them were also, you know, uh, fudging their age, but that's a different story. Even if we knew the exact age, they used to age much more. Why was this? Because due to poverty, due to ignorance, they did not take care of their bodies, their diet, their lifestyle. And then that caused the body to age much, much, much faster. On the other hand, some people, in spite of being poor, they knew because it came to them from their family. They did not understand, but they knew, oh, now like uh, there was they, in almost all rural folklore, they know in this month I should eat this, in that month I should not eat that and all those things. These are principles of Ayurveda. And they allow the body to be in rhythm with the tune which is going on outside the rhythms of nature. And when we are in alignment, then there is less wear and tear. The same example, if one wheel has gone out of alignment, then what will happen? Then we will have more wear and tear. So first thing is trying to get in alignment with nature. And let me tell you, even if we haven't done it so far, if we start doing it now, we can reverse it. In the sutras on some texts in yoga, it is very clearly mentioned that there are some practices if which performed have the ability to even reverse aging. Even reverse aging. And I am not joking. Read Hathayog Pradipika. You will find that there. Of course, how to do it is not known. That needs to be taught. And that can be learned. But we need to know that it is possible. Of course, we cannot uh, hope to do undo the aging process. That is only possible for very, very few. But we can at least add quality to our life. Because life depends on the pranic energy which is flowing within us. When we have very good, high quality pranic energy, then our systems work better. When we are in rhythm and we have this, it works even better. And when we are in this type of a rhythm, when we are observing, then we are going to the next level 
we have spoken only of nutrition of the body but we also need nutrition for the mind our thoughts our speech they are things which nourish or drain our mind and mental forces we need to be having positive thoughts uplifting thoughts constructive thoughts useful thoughts if we keep brooding of things long gone then it is akin or similar to having a cancerous heart how does cancer happen if you have some what they call as a carcinogen means a physical entity which when applied to the body repeatedly over a period of time induces a change which can cause cancer or cancerous change in the body similarly negative thoughts brooding has a similar draining effect on the mind and i'm sure all of us know brooding brooding is not good but how can we stop brooding i have made mistakes in the past and at that time i did not realize it but now i realize it oh i have made a big mistake does that happen or am i not right in saying that do you feel that you have made mistakes in the past and you would like to correct them definitely swami ji is it only one person or uh, more people in the audience feel no, that no i uh, yeah i also want to um, say that it is not just oh i i i could have done better in fact i i think that i i should go back using a time machine or something <laughs> and change myself uh if anybody else is doing atrocities i need to stand firm and and understand what i need to do right uh so that happens not once or twice but many many times many times so true so true but unfortunately we still don't have a time machine however very true yeah not at least not yet not yet however there is an option there a time machine would would make it more confusing because other people move on and stories become so complicated if you go and only change your story uh and yeah. yeah, 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 i yeah, always totally think, agree <laughs> i always think uh, bygones are bygones even if i change myself so many other things have changed so i can't do anything about it so Very that true. is how i move on yeah no but we can do something about it because you see uh the more we if if we say bygones are bygones and okay let's move on and if that is how we feel from the base from the bottom of our heart then there is no problem but many times it's only an intellectual thing and emotionally it keeps gnawing at us so that is even worse so what is the way a very simple way is very very simple way and i will give you an example for that uh they say that this is a true story when india had become just it had got independence this is was hit by devastating riots and at that point of time mahatma gandhi he had at naukhali started fast unto death i think it's naukhali am i right in naukhali or in some place he had started somewhere in calcutta in calcutta he had started fast unto death and when that was going on once a young muslim came and he appeared to be very angry and uh, everybody was a bit alarmed he had a dagger in his hand and he had a piece of bread in his other hand he came angrily to mahatma gandhi threw the roti in front of him and he said eat i don't want your death on my hands more and then he was talking and talking and mahatma gandhi did not react he just listened to him and asked what happened and slowly it came out and then he started crying and he said i killed a young boy he was 10 years old he was a hindu and i killed him and now i repent i feel very bad 
but I can't do. I, I don't want your death on my hands. I already have his death on my hands. I don't want yours on. And then he, he was really repentant. Then Mahatma Gandhi said, do one thing. Because he asked, what can I do? He said, do one thing. Pick up another boy who is an orphan and take care of him as if he was your own. But ensure that the boy was of the same religion as the one whom you killed. And that way, then you are able to repay that debt. The principle which we have to keep in mind is that we might not be able to go back in time, but we can move forward in time. Always there are people, situations, circumstances which are similar to the past. Let me make a change. And that change, when we create, it has the ability to wash the previous mistakes. And that is very important because it washes something deep within here. It is one of the strongest detergents. No matter how bad a stain it may be, we can clear that. This is another thing. We don't have to live with regrets. We can make a change. And that is what we should do. So that is the second thing. The third thing which you asked was about physical ailments. Of course, yes, the body is going to age. No doubt about it. But we can use principles of diet, of lifestyle, of mental patterns, yogic practices, so that we can, point number one, reduce the harmful effects of aging and bring up the grace, the beauty, the dignity. When does grace come in? When you have a person who is dancing gracefully, if you observe, it is because when it is in rhythm and it is in synchronicity, it is not that one hand goes down, another hand, it, there are no jerky movements. It is fluid. It is flowing. It is flowing. That is important. So we need to flow with the times. Then we are graceful. Then there is a dignity which comes in. Because when we are flowing with time, then we know that the other person has not responded correctly to me. But it is my choice how to respond. If somebody shouts at me, I can let my instincts take over and shout back at him 10, more, uh, ten times more vociferously. Or I can just ignore him and keep walking my path. It might appear that, oh, I'm a, a weaker person because I'm not responding. But in the long run, I'm walking towards my goal. I achieve what I want to achieve. That person who is shouting at me doesn't achieve. And then where are, where am I? Where is that person? I am closer to my goal. That person is still stuck there. That is what gives us dignity. So we need to understand this. We need to be able to make this as our internal decision making algorithm. Everything cannot happen on intellectual basis. It also needs to come in from within. So making changes over there, these practices slowly start making a difference. And therefore, certainly the earlier you begin, the better are we equipped. But remember, it is never too late to start. Prabhupada, the founder of ISKCON, he started the ISKCON movement at the ripe age of 60. He was not young when he started it, but it was in sync with requirements of the time. And see, where is it today? It has become a movement beyond that person. 
because he has given birth to an idea of course there are going to be some difficulties there are going to be problems but the thing it was in sync with time even when he started at age of 60 came up that is what we need to keep in mind it is very very essential and important to keep this in mind that we are students till the last moment of life we have been given this birth for a very specific purpose in today's times generally it is felt that the moment i retire from a job my utility in life is over what can i do i am hopeless i am useless but no it is not that way on a personal level the moment i realize that i am here to follow a journey to learn something and to work out something work out my previous karmas and to learn proper and better samskaras then it does not matter what response is being given to me that is not in my hands anyways but how do i respond how do i behave is crucial that is important and when that happens then there is a change which comes in and we have seen people who have aged physically but mentally they are so alert they are so in tune and then they are not childish but they become child like everybody loves children but nobody loves childishness in an adult they love child likeness because there is that innocence there is divinity that is what we need it is possible even if i have not led a life which is in tune with nature which is yogic still it is possible and for that i don't need to do shirshasan and all those things as i grow older my physical body is going to come down but there are ways and means by which we can tap into that energy which is available to us and utilize it so it is a long process but the journey is possible and i believe when we start this journey it automatically takes us ahead it teaches us it gives us directions just like in a detective story you have one clue and then another clue and a third clue and slowly the trail emerges and it takes you to the solution the same way nature tells us because nature is inherently benevolent not malevolent she doesn't want to punish us she wants to teach us and if we are not able to learn then she needs to tell us in a stronger voice that is all she is doing so when we realize that then our approach changes and then we start making steps in that direction so i think hima ji that would summarize your you know the question which you had asked of course it's a very wide question and uh, uh, i won't be able to do complete justice to that but i have given you some pointers by which we can start moving in that direction thank you swami ji lot of points to ponder over and to and follow I also, and, hope, i also hope some action points not just to ponder yeah. over no <laughs> instead of saying oh i'm getting old i cannot do this i cannot do that start your life like you are starting today and it is a wonderful encouragement to know it is better late than never so that is one thing we need to keep in mind and start from now today <laughs> if we have and, any and also, negative thoughts then you know yes yogic practices there are some practices which are very very simple apparently but very profound very powerful which create lot of shift within and they can be tuned for people with physical limitations also so uh, 
do not think that okay all is done no so much is possible the world is full of possibilities no doubt about that thank you swami ji the next point swami ji follows very nicely to this one once you know we we finish our responsibilities in our lives when the kids are young when you are running a family you are so busy making decisions doing the right things and uh, so busy that you don't even have time to think about other things on a day to day life you are mentally physically you are busy doing the right thing for everybody and for yourself and uh, but once you reach a point once the kids leave your lives then sometimes you feel like there is no purpose in our lives and what do we do next how do we stay positive um what do we do with with uh, our time and uh, you know the energy that we have not to waste all that and how to put it to use and feel good about yourself and uh, stay positive um so my question swami ji is that uh, people um all over they need help volunteers and uh, some service to other people does that help you when you step out of your uh, you know what am i going to do i have no purpose to go and help other people and uh, doing some service some volunteer work i think you have touched upon a very 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 raw nerve in society i think the point of loneliness and the point of what is so poignantly called as the empty nest phase because when children are there we have invested so much of our energy in them and then sometimes we want to keep them close to us because they are our support but we also realize that if we try and keep them with us we are limiting them so we release them out and nowadays they move on themselves also because that is the need of times however we have not equipped ourselves to deal with this vacuum which is created and that is a very 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 painful phase in life if we have not prepared ourselves for it earlier when there used to be joint families then there were multiple activities which were there in fact the joint families of olden times were like a community in itself you have somebody taking birth you have somebody playing around you have somebody doing work you have a group who is uh, elderly and the elderly are supporting the new ones they are passing on their wisdom and they are sitting back and observing supporting where needed you know it it was a very nice thing as long as it was working in proper sync over a period of time there were some discrepancies which came and then that whole thing almost broke so now when children move on we have nothing in life because we have not invested into ourselves nobody has taught us that yes children are important but beyond children i have a life because i am an atman who has come on this earth for a specific purpose one of this is having children raising them strengthening them and then allowing them to grow but that is not the be all and end all unfortunately life has not prepared us for that life has prepared us to earn money but not anything beyond that that is where samskaras are important and that is where what you said selfless service is also important that is where hobbies are important so that gives you something to look forward to when you interact with other people and when you are doing service so that creates a purpose in you so you know if you have a um commitment to something oh today i have to go there and i need to do this and so it, 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 you generally feel more positive about yourself helping other people 
I was speaking about the empty nest phase. This comes to us to teach us that I, as an individual, have more to achieve in life than just career, than just children, than just my partner, than just my immediate family. I have a responsibility to myself to enrich myself, to uplift myself so that my evolution continues. So when the empty nest space starts coming in, that is the time we have to start investing in ourselves. Doesn't matter if we have not consciously invested in ourselves earlier. We have so many experiences with us, so much of knowledge which we have accumulated over the years. Let us learn to share it with others. Stepping out of the confines of the family. And that is what is also known as Vanaprastha. What does Vanaprastha mean? Vanaprastha means one who has proceeded to the forest. And what happens in the forest? In the forest, we learn to live in tune with nature. Just for some time, you think what will happen if you today go into a forest, if there is any left. Of course, in today's times, forests have become very rare. But if you go to a forest, you will perforce not be able to have late night parties because there might be tigers and uh, other carnivorous animals coming in. So perforce, you have to sleep early. You have to wake early. and over a period of time, you start getting in tune with nature. That is the first principle of Vanapras. One who has moved out from my limitation into alignment with nature. And when that happens, then more things start coming in. That is very essential. And then I start looking around and I realize, oh, my individual children have gone away. The bird has flown out, but then there is so much and this and the love, the affection which you feel. You see a small bird which has fallen off and you go and tend to that bird. You see there is a branch which is drooping or a small sapling which is not there. The desire to come and help. So you start reaching out to others, those who are not in the circle of I, me, myself, my family, my friends, my boss, my subordinates, my benefactors, anybody who is not in that of my, you reach out to. And then slowly and slowly you start becoming a wise person because when you step back, then you are able to observe very well. When I was studying in medicine. One thing, you know, uh, there, there was an x-ray and uh, one of the things was in the exam to observe the x-ray. So as students, we would look into a, a specific thing and go only into that. So one of the students, he went and he was, he was looking at one small artifact which was there which could have been some uh, indication to an ailment. So he was looking very carefully and just focusing into that. And my professor, he just tapped on his shoulder, pulled him back two feet away and asked him, now look at the x-ray. And the child was, uh, you know, a bit startled. And he, when he looked again, said, oh, sir, the x-ray is, uh, you know, flipped horizontally. It's not correct. Yes. The moment you step back, the perspective changes. You get a better picture because you are now able to correlate with the life. And that artifact which you were thinking was maybe an illness or something. Oh, when you turn the x-ray over left to right, then everything became okay. So that is something when we are, as you mentioned, we are into the heat of things, doing things, morning, evening, afternoon, night, 
career, children, everything, everything, everything. We don't have time to step back. But now when we get a time to step back and we observe what is happening, then suddenly we observe, oh, this is there, that is there, that is there. And that wisdom we can relate and share with others at a proper time, in a proper manner. Because please remember, wisdom when shared in at a wrong time is an interference. But when wisdom is shared at the right time is a helping hand. So we also need to learn when and how to share our experiences in life. And we also have to remember that our experiences in life had happened 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So they will not be exactly same, but the principles working over there will be the same. So if from the event, we distill the principles and share it, you will see we are able to benefit more people. We are able to allow people to reach out to us. In this age, everybody wants to talk. Nobody wants to listen. And we need somebody to listen to us, to hear us out, to console us, to appreciate us, to say, oh, wow, I think you are doing great. We can fulfill that role in society. So that is something which is very essential. And what you spoke of selfless service, volunteering, that is important. But along with that, if we make that as our effort for self-improvement, not that I am helping you, but I am using this to help myself as well as you, a win-win situation, then my emotions which are bottled up, my mistakes, my regrets, my limitations, I get a chance to help somebody and I don't project my thoughts on others. Because remember, if we project our thoughts on others, consciously or unconsciously, those people are going to feel very uncomfortable. But if I open out knowledge and share it with them, then they can use that knowledge and go further in life. That is a liberating experience. And that is something we have to learn. So we are learning and our learning helps somebody else also to learn. Thirdly, by doing a selfless act, we are negating, correcting, wiping away my mistakes in the past. That is also known as penance. What is the concept of penance? The concept of penance is the same. I have made a mistake in the past. I voluntarily undertake difficulties on myself so that I can think over what is the effect, what was the thing, and I learn from that. So that penance helps me grow. In the same way, when we start helping others as a method of self-improvement, self-enhancement, that I improve, he or she improves, the situation improves, the world becomes a better place to live in, even if it is microscopically better. And when we become a medium of divine energy to flow, that divine energy makes way to make changes in itself. So that is how. Okay. And then coming back to the topic of getting, uh, not getting older or, or delaying the aging process, which are the uh, physical activities uh, that you would recommend? That's a good question because already we are uh, about 8.30. This is exactly what uh, we will be covering in the uh, workshop on become an elder. Because uh, speaking about these is not enough. We need to practice them and we need to know how to do it. And that is not something which can be possible in a short period of time. Uh, so what... Uh, Actually, there, there, there was a request which has come from uh, multiple people. So if there is enough interest, then we can have maybe a three-month session at appropriate times wherein we can 
build in different activities, not just yoga. Yoga is one tool, but there are different things which we have to come wherein different problems which are faced by elderly people can be addressed and we can do a turnaround, do a transformation so that we have lively, energetic, beautiful, wise elderly people who are not just old, but they are an elder. You know, in uh, Latin American countries, they say a person who is uh, the mm, Sardar of the tribe that is known as, he is known as the elder in the community. So, uh, there is a plan to start an activity wherein we can learn all of these, discover many things, share our knowledge and make the best of the time we have on planet Earth. Because as uh, all of us know, death is sure and certain. But equally sure and certain is that the time we have is meant for something which is very, very essential. And God, divine health, the nature, natural principles are always waiting for us to start that journey and so much will just flow in. How to do it is the problem is where we don't know. And that has to be a combination of yogic practices, a combination of meditative practices, a combination of reaching out and sharing, a combination of discussing and so on. So that we can bring up positivity within us, around us, beyond us. That is what we need to do. Yes, Chitra? Yeah, Swamiji. Uh, I have like certain points I would want to be addressed uh, in, the, in the future upcoming webinars or the workshop about aging and about uh, becoming elder. Uh, you know, this is because I have been observing for the last 30 years, my parents who aged and their siblings, and, you know, we, we are kind of blessed with a whole lot of elders in our family, my mother's sisters, my in-laws. They are all like, you know, they are elderly, but they are uh, there to bless us with their, their existence and their presence and their wisdom. Uh, but along with that, we have also seen the troubles they face. And, you know, there won't be a day that passes by without thinking that we shouldn't go through this. You know, that is something that everybody thinks. And, uh, you know, how to escape from that kind of a, a phase where even though you are so wanted and so valuable, you still face some difficulties, uh, emotional, physical mostly physical because the uh, body ages, number one. And uh, Swamiji, another thing I wanted to ask is about, uh, you were saying in Vanaprastha, people uh, you know, will be willing to listen to your wisdom. But I have seen that more elders suffer from that problem that they have so much to share, but there is nobody to hear you know, and follow. Mostly so because there are multiple sources these days. Uh, Wisdom like comes from all said, angles. Internet, Google Devata is uh, omnipresent. Yeah, uh, not only Google, but uh, people, you know, they, they wish to listen from uh, sources which are more authentic than their own parents. Uh, and yeah, you know, today there is so much of discourse everywhere and you really can't decide which one to follow or whom to follow. Uh, so, you know, there is so much bottled up they want to shower on somebody but they won't get and that also is part of trouble that people face and uh, uh, Swamiji then number three is uh, though we say empty nester phase and elderly phase and old age and everything there are multiple responsibilities a person still faces at that age you know and with less economical freedom on them and uh, re multiple responsibilities in, in terms of taking care of elders, taking care of youngsters, doing their own uh, uh, life, you know, progressing through that. Self. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, catering to multiple responsibilities towards all people that they have accumulated throughout their life. Now, after 50, 60 years on this earth, you have so many relations to uh, keep up with and all that. So everybody demands a part of your time and you still want to share that part to everybody, but still want to have your own time in your activities, being spiritually engaged, being volunteering here and there, learning and all that. So how do you accommodate that uh, in this uh, in this short span or whatever 24 hours that we have in a day? We have to learn how to dance, <laughs> balancing all the things. You know, there is that, uh, I think it's a Rajasthani dance or uh, which dance where they have uh, fire uh, lamps on their body and they, you know, they go around. How yeah, as, age, as, as we progress in age, one more lamp is added on your head to balance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it is, it, uh, you have brought out very important points, but I would like to tell that this is a point, these are points, all in fact points which we have raised till now are points which cannot be addressed only intellectually. We need to start doing that. We, you know, until and unless we don't start doing, nothing is going to change. The moment we start doing, slowly and slowly, there is going to be a little bit of inertia. But after that, changes will start taking place and things will happen. Of course, it is not going to be, you know, uh, suddenly there is a Harry Potter van which has come and everything has changed. No, that's not going to be there. It is going to be a slow and uh, uh, long journey. But as we progress step by step, it becomes more enriching, more uh, fun, more happy, and more satisfying. And that is what I would like to, you know, uh, if, if it is uh, possible, if we can come together and have some sessions, some activities wherein we can learn something like this, then is something because just speaking, I don't think is enough. Umaji, uh, hey, Maji, is there anything uh, more? Because we are already about 10 minutes beyond our Yeah, time. I was going to ask. Anyway, Swamiji, the volunteer term I just started, but you opened a new world and it is a new meaning to volunteerism and how you can connect yourself. It is not to volunteerism, that. it is sadhana. If you look at it as sadhana, then yes. Oh, then it, it 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 opens a very new vista. Yes. Thank you, Swamiji. I learned something about physics too today. Uh, so yeah, there is one more point. But do we have time, Swamiji? Uh, I, I, I think we are uh, already beyond. If we want, uh, Shilpa, you can have a look. If people want, we can have another uh, session where we can cover more topics and then we can discuss and uh, we should have some activity where we, you know, because this talking should lead to some concrete activity because just talking is not going to solve the problems doing is going to solve the problems. So we can certainly have another session where we discuss about these points. But I think you should think about having some sessions wherein we can learn how to make that change within ourselves. Recognizing, knowing, admitting, acknowledging my limitations, but also not forgetting my abilities, my capabilities, my knowledge which I have acquired. How we can use make use of the best. That is something which is very crucial. And with this, I think uh, we should uh, call it a day. And then we can continue it uh, further. Let this be just the beginning of a new journey. On behalf of all the participants, Swamiji, thank you for your words of wisdom today. I have just uh, tried to share what I have tried to learn and understand. What I am speaking is from the masters. I am just trying to share it with all of you. And if together we can move in a positive direction, then we are leaving the world a better place 
than what we have found it to be. And I think there is nothing more satisfying than that. With this bhav, let us conclude today. Please close your eyes, hands on your knees, awareness at the eyebrow center, connecting to the grace of all the masters, offering an arm to them, feeling their grace. We shall chant Om three times, followed by Shanti. Taking in a deep breath. Om. 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 Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma amrutam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu, Sarve Sham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samaspa Tukhino Bhavantu Om Tramba Kamyajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanan Rutyor Mukshiyamam Rutat Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hands in Pranamudra. Vameva Mata Chapita Tvameva Tvameva Bandhushcha Sakha Tvameva Tvameva Vidya Dravinam Tvameva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Tvame Vasarvam Mama Deva Deva Tvame Vasarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Om Hari Om Such, such gently rub your palms Place them on the closed eyes Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes to the brain to the whole body Energizing the eyes, the brain, the body. And then gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om. Namaste.